the Galaxy A9 2018. Now that all the negativity is done, it's all out of the way, let's get back to tech. The world's first phone to sport a quad camera setup to the back. So are they any good? How about the rest of the phone? Or is it just another Samsung mid-ranger hidden behind this shiny gradient back? Let's find out. Hey guys, Ash here from C4E Tech and in this video, let's unbox the all-new Galaxy A9 2018. If you do end up liking this video, please don't forget to turn on notifications by clicking that bell icon. And oh yeah, we have our monthly giveaway, a couple actually. You can join in by clicking on this card right here. Check it out if you haven't yet. The A9 doesn't come in the regular old Samsung box. We have a picture showing off those quad cameras and gradient design on the top of the box. And on the underside, we have some of the important specifications. Let's now tear the plastic off and have a look inside the box. First up, we have this image ejector pin on some cardboard. Stashed inside this is the quick start guide and a clear soft case. I'm glad to see Samsung include this in the box. So digging further in, we have the A9 2018. Now this is the bubblegum pink variant that we have with us today. It looks quite pretty, I must say. Let's snap that soft case on and set it aside for now because let's get back to the box, see what else is there. We have the Type-C cable and there are a pair of in-ear type buds. Now, these might not have changed over the last couple of years, but at least Samsung still provides them with a box, even with all their mid ranges and you know what that means, right? The headphone jack, it's still here. Can't believe I'm mentioning that as a feature, but that is how it is these days, right? Anyway, the last item in the box, that's the adaptive fast charger. Now back to the phone itself, let us start off with what all of you guys have been waiting for, those cameras. So there are four of them to the back, so why four? What are these for? Okay, let's start. First up, we have an 8 megapixel ultra wide fixed focus sensor with an f2.4 lens, a pixel size of 1.12 microns and a 120 degree field of view. Here are a couple of snaps that we shot with this one. So let's roll that. Personally, I quite like the new perspective that wide angle lenses bring to the table. Next up, we have the telephoto lens. Now this is a 10 megapixel sensor with the same f2.4 aperture lens, but this time it brings autofocus into the mix. Optical zoom is almost always better than digital zoom. And as for image quality, again, I feel it's quite good. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. So here's another sample. Now moving on to the final two sensors, it's a 24 megapixel f1.7 primary sensor that is coupled with a 5 megapixel depth sensing unit for those live focus shots. We tried these out as well and I have to say the pictures do look quite promising. Would you guys want us to do a dedicated camera review for the Galaxy A9 2018? Let me know in the comments down below. So other than the regular modes, we also have a few other bells and whistles with this phone. Slow motion video, AI powered scene optimizer and a night mode that uses pixel binning technology on the primary 24 megapixel sensor to combine the 0.9 micron size pixels into larger 1.8 micron size pixels to allow for better lit nighttime photos. And of course, we can't just ignore that selfie camera, right? So this is a 24 megapixel sensor. It takes some good looking shots and even manages some pretty decent selfie portraits. Now the cameras aren't the only thing that's interesting about the Galaxy A9 2018. That beautiful gradient back, it deserves a mention as well. After Huawei started this trend with the P20 Pro, it seems like almost every other OEM has taken a leaf out of their book and implemented it onto their own phones. For example, I mean Honor being a sub-brand did it with quite a few phones, Oppo did it on their Find X, Motorola with their P30, Xiaomi with their Mi 8 Lite and finally it's Samsung's turn to jump on board with the Galaxy A9 2018. It might not have a notch to the front but this back definitely makes sure this design is 2018. While we are on the topic of design, let me quickly take you through the device. Up top we have the secondary mic as well as the SIM tray. This one holds two SIM cards plus a micro SD card at the same time. So no hybrid business. This is dedicated support for micro SD, which is extremely good. But what is in is that you get the Bixby button to the left. Yep, it's on the mid ranges now. Samsung, Samsung, Samsung. Anyway, the right houses the volume rockers and the power button. The bottom has the speaker grill, Type-C port, and yay, headphone jack. Like, yep, like I already mentioned, I'm so happy to see it here. 
Up front you have the usual camera and sensor array flanking the earpiece and below that a 6.3 inch Full HD Plus AMOLED panel. This is a gorgeous display with inky blacks and great contrast. It also gets pretty bright and yes there is an auto brightness sensor on board. Samsung hasn't skimped out on any of the major ones when it comes to the A9 2018. Now speaking of sensors let's talk a little bit about the internals. We have the Snapdragon 660 running the show with 6 or 8 gigs of RAM and a whopping 128 gigs of onboard storage. Of course, the dedicated microSD card slot means that there is even room for more expansion if you want to. Now we've seen the Snapdragon 660 in a bunch of phones recently and it has proven to be quite a capable performer. We expect that it should keep up with everything from day-to-day -day tasks to even the occasional game of PUBG if you like gaming. It's great, but given that Samsung is definitely gonna charge a premium for this phone, I would have loved to see something a little newer, a little more recent, maybe a Snapdragon 710 or at least a 670, because you'll think about it, Xiaomi sells a 710 at 20K, so if Samsung's gonna price it higher, at least a 710, right? But the 660 is quite solid, I'm not complaining about the 660 here, but just the fact that on a more expensive phone, I would have liked to see something a little bit more recent. So moving on, the battery, it is 3800 mAh and the fast charger is included in the box, so that's a nice touch. Finally, we come to software. This is Samsung Experience 9.0 built on top of Android 8.0 Oreo, so a little older on the software. Would have loved to see Pi, but, or at least 8.1, but it's 8.0. Anyway, there's nothing new in here that we haven't seen before, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. You have the regular Samsung staples like Secure Folder, always on display, and Bixby Assistant, combined with a couple of 2018 specific editions like Face Unlock and Chat Over Video. The regular bevy of gestures are also present. What is absent though is the full version of Samsung Pay. Why Samsung? Why? You do have Samsung Pay Mini, but in its current form, it's pretty much just a glorified online wallet app. And while we are on the subject of missing features, I'd also have to add dust and water resistance. The A9 2018 does not come with any IP rating, although its predecessor, kind of predecessor, the A8 Plus had IP68 certification. So maybe they come up with a A9 Plus with IP6, I don't know what Samsung's doing. But the full fat version of Samsung Pay was also present on the A8 Plus and the price tag was 33. The A9 2018 we expected to be priced higher than 35, probably somewhere around 37, 39. Uh, though I would love it if they surprised us all and came in at 30k. We don't know the exact pricing as of shooting this video, but we will update the description or pin a comment with it as soon as we get to know it. So keep an eye on that space. But yeah, coming back, Samsung has always placed these A phones, the top A phones, kind of as OnePlus competitors. The A8 Plus was priced similar to the OnePlus 5T, the A8 Star similar to the OnePlus 6, which is why I kind of expect the A9 2018 to land in the OnePlus 6T price bracket. Now Samsung here is hoping that their new gradient design and quad camera hype does enough to turn, you guys, turn your attention right away from those powerful offerings in the segment, like for example, we've got not just the OnePlus 60, even the LG G7, thank you. But have they done enough? I'm gonna save my judgment till the full review, but you guys don't have to. Tell us what you think about the Galaxy A9 2018 in the comments down below. So yes, for me, the, the cameras are gonna kinda make it or break it here. Yes, the chip is not as powerful, but if, if the cameras turn out to be exceptional, then it might just be worth it. Again, I will save all that for the full review. Uh, tell us if you'd want to see this phone compared to any other phone in this segment uh, and I will try to get that done. So with that, it is now time I bid you adieu. Thumbs up, thumbs down based on what you felt about this video. Also subscribe, turn on notifications by clicking that bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of my daily uploads. Thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, my name is Ash. You've been watching C4 Retech and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.